Hello and welcome. I am Simeon Boyce with the latest edition of NBC News and uh, my sign language interpreter at night is Lenin Mbonda, our top stories. <music> President Chagwila says China remains a great partner in Malawi's infrastructure development. Government describes the tourism street carnival as crucial in supporting the growth of the country's tourism sector. And in sports, Blue Eagles are this year's FTH Bank Cup champions after beating defending champions FC Binyasa Big Bullets 3-2 on post-match penalties. Glad you could join us. President Dr. Lassa Siakwena says China remains a great partner in infrastructure development of the country. Dr. Chakwena was speaking at Kamuzu International Airport in Lilongwe on his departure to Beijing in the People's Republic of China, where he is set to attend the fourth summit of Forum on Africa-China Cooperation, FOCAC. My Soch Kadzula reports. Doraza Segura highlighted China's significant role as a key partner in Mao's development efforts. He emphasized that China supports Malawi across various sectors of its economy, making the collaboration between the two countries highly valuable. The president noted that his visit to China is particularly important as it will aid Malawi in advancing its development agenda. Issues that we will discuss bilaterally, but you already know that China has committed itself to our development agenda and so what has happened already is an indication that um, that which we are talking about uh, moving forward with several infrastructural development is one of the things that they will be involved in and we'll be talking primarily about our ATM strategy and how they can uh, facilitate um, the implementation of the same. During his visit, President Jaguera will join other African heads of state and government to discuss and adopt the 2025-2027 Beijing FOCAC Plan of Action. This strategic plan will outline the framework for China-Africa cooperation across various sectors over the next three years. Furthermore, President Jaguera is scheduled to hold bilateral talks with President Xi Jinping of the Republic of China. These discussions are expected to strengthen the cordial relationship between Malawi and China and enhance cooperation, particularly in transport infrastructure project. China remains one of Malawi's most important partners, especially in supporting the country's infrastructure development. President Jaguera was seen off at the airport by Vice President Dr. Michael Wusi, along with several cabinet ministers, deputies, party officials and members of the Malawi Congress Party, among others. Maya Soji Kadzula, MBC News, Kamu International Airport, Lirongwe. Meanwhile, Malawi Ambassador to China, Alan Chimteza, has expressed optimism over the outcomes of the FOCAC summit to take place in Beijing this week. Chimteza says Malawi stands to benefit from agreements to be reached following the China-Africa Cooperation Frameworks expiry in 2021. Chiembeke Zoka reports from Beijing. The Forum on China-Africa Cooperation was established in the year 2000 as a platform where People's Republic of China and African countries that have ties with China meet to coordinate their efforts and enhance cooperation in various areas of mutual interest. The 2024 edition, which takes place here in Beijing, People's Republic of China, follows the 2021 edition after the expiry of the three-year plans laid out that year. The theme for this summit is joining hands to advance modernization and build a high-level China-Africa community with a shared future. The summit of the forum this year, which is the fourth, is expected to renew friendship between African countries and China and map a way forward in China-Africa relations. The Malawi ambassador to the People's Republic of China, Alan Chinteza, says the meeting is crucial for the Malawi president to participate to ensure the country's national interests are taken into account. It was crucial for him to come to participate because it's a formulation. 
we have to make sure that our interests as Malawi are actually agreed upon at this particular summit because if we, we are not taken into consideration in terms of our priority areas, then the next three years it means that we won't be able to, to benefit from the next three year program. So it's, it was very crucial for the President and Malawi to participate just like the other countries so that we don't miss out on the relationship and cooperation between Africa and China. Chintedza adds that Malawi also needs to direct the resources from China towards priority areas, noting that China has huge capacity to assist the ATM strategy. As you know that uh, the president has uh, actually uh, emphasized the three uh, areas, the ATM, agriculture uh, modernization and the mechanization. Uh, you've also got the uh, tourism and you've got mining. And these areas are, are linked, are interlinked. Now the, the, the next program, we want to make sure that Malawi's interests are also incorporated and they can only inc be incorporated if we participate and uh, actually uh, show up in terms of telling them what our priorities are. President Dr. Lazarus Chakwera comes to China this year for the summit after attending the China-Africa Economic and Trade Expo last year, which was an activity hatched by a similar forum in the preceding years. Over 50 African countries shared diplomatic ties with China as China's influence on the African development narrative continues to grow, not just as a donor for various development projects, but also a country with an inspiring story, having risen from poverty to become a global economic powerhouse, reporting for NBC in Beijing. People Vice President Dr. Michael Osi has applauded the Anglican Church for working effectively with government in enhancing national development. Dr. Usi has said this at Silver Stadium during a thanksgiving and farewell mass of Right Reverend Francis Frank Kaulanda, who is the third bishop of Anglican Diocese of Lake Malawi, who is retiring. Beatrice Mwape reports. After serving the Anglican Church for 42 years as priest and bishop, Right Reverend Francis Frank Kaulanda has finished his work. The Thanksgiving and Farewell Mass was organized to appreciate his contribution to the Anglican Church and the country. Activities marking the celebrations included singing and dancing. <laughs> Speaking during the ceremony, Vice President Dr. Michael Usid described Right Reverend Kaulanda as a model of excellence, reservoir of wisdom, and a true transformative leader with love, unity, and compassion. The Vice President says Bishop Kaulanda played a significant role in the national development process, adding government will always appreciate the support it has received from Bishop Kaulanda and the Anglican Church. Dr. Usi has since pledged government's commitment to strengthen the relationship with the Church in the country. On his part, Chairperson of the Anglican Council of Malawi, Right Reverend Alinafi Galimba, says Right Reverend Kaulanda has contributed significantly in uniting the Church. He says Kaulanda has facilitated implementation of different developmental projects in health, education, as well as social works in the church. That's the kind of leadership which we need as a nation. People who will be there to save and not to seek their own benefits. We don't need opportunity seekers. We need servants, those who can actually uplift the life of the people of Malawi. I think that's, that's the way to go. On his part, the retiring bishop, Right Reverend Kaulanda, says the journey has been a mixed bag and has applauded the church for appreciating his works. He has since urged the remaining church leaders to put God in their works for them to deliver effectively. The only thing which I can tell them is that they have to have faith in God and be people who are living in the word of God because it's the word of God which is, can give us a direction in the service of him and uh, let me say that there should not be very much uh, be comforted with the earthly things because they're not uh, lasting things retiring bishop of the anglican diocese of lake malawi right reverend kaulanda has served in different portfolios of the anglican church such as diocesan secretary and diocesan youth coordinator among others he also helped in establishment of bishop mtegateka secondary school right reverend kaulanda has also served the nation as chairperson of the Public Affairs Committee in the Central Region, 
worked as board member of Nice Trust and chairperson of Microloan Foundation. Right Reverend Kaulanda also served as chancellor for the Lake Malawi Anglican University, Lamau. The Thanksgiving and Farewell Mass has taken place under the theme, Finishing the Race. Former Malawi Seventh-day Adventist Church President Pastor Flaxon Kuyama has urged Malawians to continue praying to God in the face of many challenges that have faced the world. Kuyama said this at the end of the 2024 camp meeting for Manja SDA district in Blanda. Kuyama, who is currently ministering at earlier 47 for Seventh Day Church, said together and in prayer, challenges will be history. All those things which the country is passing through, economical challenges, health challenges, the solution for all those problems is to focus, to put our focus on Jesus Christ. He is the one who can control the situation. He is the one who can control the storms. You remember Peter was about to sink, but when he requested Jesus Christ to help him, Jesus came in and Peter was rescued. So for us as a nation, let's put our main focus on Jesus Christ, he is going to solve all our problems. The theme of the six-day camp meeting was transformed into his likeness as we go. And pastor for Manja SDH Yolosi Nkuzuona says the week was fruitful as Manja SDH followers have renewed their covenant with God. The camp meeting for Manja SDH this year has been a success and we have seen the power of God being manifested uh, during this camp meeting. We have witnessed people coming back to God, people renewed their covenants to God, people seeing Christ as their source of hope. Um, the, overall, the overall theme of our camp meeting has been transformed into his uh, likeness, the power of the gospel. And the gospel here implies Christ. When we are transformed into the likeness of Christ, we'll be able to face the challenges that are, that are rocking the world, that are facing each and everyone's life. Financial access for rural markets, smallholders and enterprises, farms, eh? has underscored the importance of exposing local farmers to markets through the National Agriculture Fair, saying it is a catalyst for economic transformation. Farmse community-based financial organizations coordinator Modesta Namangale made the remarks at the end of this year's National Agriculture Fair held in Blanda. Chisomo Break reports. Namangale said the National Agriculture Fair provides a crucial platform for local farmers to connect with companies and buyers, fostering long-term business relationships for economic growth. We have um, an intervention whereby we are linking farmers to high-value chain markets. So some of the buyers are here. They, they are uh, visiting the pavilions to see what the farmers are doing so that they may get maybe where to buy from. So we have, uh, I'll give you an example, we have farmers that have come from Katabe with rice and uh, cassava flour. So these farmers were linked to WFP which is buying their rice currently. But because they are producing in large quantities, we wanted them to find other markets so that they will be able to supply. To. President Dr. Lazarus Chaguera and Mozambican President Felipe Nusi opened the 20th National Agriculture Fair on Thursday, themed Driving Towards Export-Oriented Agriculture Through Commercialization and Innovation. The fair attracted 184 exhibitors, up from 113 last year. They include exhibitors from Mozambique, Kenya, and Iswatini. Chisomo Break, NBC News, Blantyre. You are watching NBC News with me, Simeon Boyce, and my sign language interpreter at night is Lynn Mponda. Remember, you can access all NBC digital platforms by scanning the QR code at the top right corner of your TV screen. A reminder of our top stories.
President Chagwila says China remains a great partner in Malawi's infrastructure development. Government describes the tourism street carnival as crucial in supporting the growth of the country's tourism sector. And in sports, Blue Eagles are this year's FTH Bank Cup champions after beating defending champions FC Binyasa Big Bullets 3-2 on post-match penalties. Maranatha, sisi kudeleke, titatse gula, Maranatha, Capital Girls Academy, makolo muna angula, tinamfa. Muna di mkufuna suguru ya pa mwamba u Capitolo, ya nyamata, nyeta zanayo tsopano. Maranatha, Capital Boys Academy, marawake, ndi abu na kwambiri, 50 kilometers, ujoka ya kunilongwe, pampone na peni peni, pa chapatani mbode mbode motel. Chakuja ndi ni hotel standard, kukamba sama punziro, mkutuwa kare inu yosili mapwege tai. Funsa funsani, kuinu fe. Welcome back to NBC News. Minister of Tourism Ovela Kamtukule has emphasized the significance role that the Tourism Street Carnival plays in bolstering tourism sector. Kamtukule made the remarks in Lilongwe during the 2024 Tourism Street Carnival. Details in this report by Madalitso Muhango. The Malawi Tourism Council hosted the 2024 Tourism Street Carnival in Longwe, which kicked off with a march from Memorial Tower to Presidential Drive in the city center. Various stakeholders in the tourism sector showcased their exhibitions. This marks the fourth time the country has held the carnival event. Speaking at the event, Minister of Tourism Vera Kantugule emphasized that such events provide operators in the sector with an opportunity to showcase their products and promote tourism. Kantugule added that the event fosters the sector's growth, thereby contributing to the socioeconomic development. We're taking this month as an opportunity for us to reflect what has gone well within the sector, but also how we can improve some of the things that are coming uh, that need our attention. One of the things that I think is very critical is about how do we reduce the prices for our operators, from our operators, to ensure that the, the, the offerings that they provide, the products that they have and the services are a little bit affordable to uh, the larger part of Malawians. And I think for me, that's one of the greatest conversations that we're going to have within this month. In her remarks, Tema Kanjaza, Head of Sales, Marketing and Distribution at Sunbear Tourism, underscored that the Tourism Street Carnival helps companies and operators in the sector to improve their products and services on the market. With tourism, there are so many benefits and so much great potential uh, for Malawi. There's still more that we can do uh, to benefit from it, but also the multiplier effects that come from tourism are so incredible and you have a lot of uh, segments of people benefiting from just having tourism. And so this month, uh, what excites us the most is that it highlights the importance of tourism, what we do, our products and our services. This year's Tourism Street Carnival was held under the theme Tourism and Peace. Madalito Muhango, MBC News, Lilongwe. The Malawi Congress Party, MCP, has announced a full National Executive Committee membership following its elective convention last month. Abidamia is a new second deputy president of MCP. MCP Secretary General Richard Chimwendo Banda made the announcement during the post convention press briefing in Lilongwe. Olive Piri reports. MCP Secretary General Richard Chimwendo Banda and the party's publicity secretary Jessica Buida were among those who presided over the post convention press briefing. Chimwendo Banda said the party has elected Abida Mia 
as the second deputy president. He adds that Gerald Kazembe is now the party's first deputy secretary general, while Chizen Kandawile is second deputy secretary general. According to Chimwendo Banda, Aram Beza is the first deputy organizing secretary, while Sebi Jisanga is the second deputy organizing secretary. Former Democratic Progressive Party DPP vice president for Central Region, Oladi Musa, has found his way into MCP NEC as second deputy director of campaign. Former DPP member Kenny Msonda has also made it into the MCP NEC as second deputy publicity secretary. Chimwendo Banda said the party has also elected among others Virumbiko Mumba, Joseph Njofialema, Harim Kandawire, Kenzi Kalingoma, Nancy Dembo and George Zulu as ordinary members of the party's National Executive Committee. MCP Publicity Secretary Jessica Buila says their party will continue to save the interest of Malawians by implementing different development projects. This party is owned by villagers. This is the only national party and all anger, all differences have been put aside because we are united in making sure that Malay Congress Party continues to form government and forms the next government. Meanwhile, MCP Secretary General Richard Jimwendo Banda has described the 2024 convention as a success. Olive Piri, MBC News, Lilongwe. Education experts have commended non-state actors for their significant role in supporting government's vision of advancing inclusive education, a development that resonates well with the Malawi 2063 blueprint. Chief Education Officer for Mzuzu City, Boston, in Coma, made the remarks when Kinder Not Hilfe, a German-based organization, donated a cost worth 100 million kwacha towards special needs education at St. John of God in Mzuzu. Jackson Sichali with details. St. John of God Hospital Services through the Evila Special Needs School provides holistic inclusive education services for children with physical and intellectual disabilities. It is out of this background that education experts have commended the institutions for their dedication to improving education standards for all. Chief Executive Officer from Zuzu City, Boston Goma, said St. John of God is a true partner in the promotion of education for all. This is one of the initiatives that can fulfill the vision because as the Malawi constitution says, it, every child has a right to education. So that's why we are thanking St. John of God for the, for the procurement of this bus. It means every child in the village will be coming to the school to access education. So access and equity therefore there, it has been accomplished. Country Director for Kinder Notif, Chimu Medimani, states that the donation is aimed at alleviating mobility challenges for learners at the institution. This is very crucial because most of the children uh, with disability, they have problems of mobility to come to the school. So this bus goes very close to the households, like in the, in the, in the hot spots where these children are collected together and come here to attend schools. Chief Executive Officer for St. John of God, Dr. Charles Mwale, expressed gratitude to Kinder Notif for their support and highlighted challenges that other stakeholders could address to further promote quality education at the school. The major needs uh, which are quite costly for us are provision of uh, nutritional supplements. So uh, we know there are organizations like Mills Mills that provide, you know, Likoni power to other schools. Uh, we believe that these children can also benefit from that. And the other thing is uh, drugs. You know, most of these children, apart from having learning disabilities, some would have even acute mental illnesses like autism and the others. And for us to keep them calm and concentrate in class, we have to give them drugs, which are quite expensive for us to buy. As you know, children cannot pay for medication. So I think uh, foodstuffs and medication are some of the requirements that we need, that, that now we have covered, you know, the transport needs. In addition to its educational services, St. John of God focuses on community-based rehabilitation aimed at improving the health of children with impairment. Jackson Sijari, MBC News, Zuzu. And finally in sports, Blue Eagles have been crowned 2024 FDH Bank Cup champions after beating defending champions FCB Nyasa Big Bullets 
3-2 on post-match penalties at Bingu National Stadium in Nirongwe. The game ended new new in the regulation time. Praise Majawa compared this report read by Amin Musa. Bullets dominated in both halves and missed a lot of scoring opportunities. Come post-match penalty time, defenders Gomezia Nichirwa and Nixon Nyasuru scored their penalties while Precious Puri, Adepoji Babatunde and Clyde Sanaji missed their penalties. Mr. Mohone and Jacob Robert penalties were saved by Richard Chimbamba while Andrew Juvenala, Garnison James and Lankin Mwale scored their penalties. Eagles are to receive 35 million kwacha for winning the cup. The area 30 based side are the first lower league team to win the FDH Cup. The FDH champions have finished their tournament without conceding a goal in regular time. Eagles last won a cup in 2019 after beating Kamus Barracks 4-2 on post-match penalties in Fisid Challenge Cup. Well, congratulations to Blue Eagles. And that item wraps up this edition of NBC News, a reminder of our top stories. President Chagwira says China remains a great partner in Malawi's infrastructure development. Government describes the tourism street carnival as crucial in supporting the growth of the country's tourism sector. And in sports, Blue Eagles are this year's FTH Bank Cup champions after beating defending champions FC Binyasa Big Bullets 3-2 on post-match penalties. For more on these and other stories, follow our online platforms, Facebook, Twitter, and our website, mbc.mw. You can also access MBC digital platforms by scanning the QR code at the top right corner of your TV screen. I am Simeon Boyce, and Lillian Ponda was our sign language interpreter tonight. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.